hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here and i really appreciate your time so to be fair to the young lady that i did a video about last uh week her name was brianna nicole as i said she is a beauty influencer she made some comments that were very very colorist it was very just um tone deaf i guess you could say so she did issue an apology on her community tab just to be fair i'm going to pull that up and read her apology as well as kind of talk about you know just how i feel about it i read it already so i'm reading it again for you guys in her apology she basically talks about the reason why she felt comfortable saying what she said and how she basically meant nothing by it you know she's used to talking a certain type of way when she's off of youtube like in private when she's having conversations with her mother she calls herself a black woman which i thought was quite interesting and in her community tab apology she is a black woman too she never meant to say that her hair was like this basically that type of thing so i'm gonna read it she says hey loves i'm coming on here to sincerely apologize to any and all beautiful black african american women woman uh with any hair texture that i offended by my comment last vlog in no way did i mean to make it seem like my hair is better than anyone else's i most definitely use the wrong words which i thought was a a really good point that she made and that was my mistake i am not anti-black or colorist If you didn't know, I was raised in a black household. My mother is black and my stepdad who raised me is black. My biological father is white, but was never raised by that side of my family. And I still have never had any relationship with that side of me. Interesting word choice. Me and my mom talk every day and have normal conversations. And my mom used the words naps when it comes to her hair. My dad growing up would make little jokes about my hair being a mess, calling me a nappy little girl, a nappy hair little girl, but it's all jokes and no one took it personal. Everyone makes a mistake. Everyone makes mistake. And if you truly know me, you know that the comment that I said didn't come from a bad or negative place. And I can see that. I honestly, I... <laughs> I don't feel like she made her comment out of malice in the same way that oftentimes we hear black men spew colorist rhetoric. However, I do think that the things that she said and the way she said them is indicative of uh, her being unaware of why what she's saying would be an issue because she doesn't have those experiences, because she doesn't have those problems, because she is a racially ambiguous biracial person. So let me read on. I use the wrong words and sometimes people just have to be educated to not make certain mistakes anymore. Okay. I felt comfortable saying what I said based on conversations me and my mom have had behind the camera. And that's where y'all should you should have kept that behind the camera. My mom loves her hair and never said she didn't. I never said that she had bad hair. Just always tell me to be thankful for my hair is more manageable. And to never complain about my hair because other people have daily struggles with their hair. Never did I cherish my hair. It's just something my mom would always instill in me because of her hair journey. Which is what I said in my comment section. That her mom most likely was the first person who basically made her aware that her hair texture was better. You know, just keep it real. I promise I'm not a mean girl or think I'm better. Like I said, if you know me in real life, I'm nothing but nice, genuine, always willing to help others. I just used poor word choices. I never meant to make people feel like their hair isn't beautiful or they aren't blessed to have hair texture. I stand behind all black women because I am a black woman myself and a proud one at that. We are all beautiful in our own ways, and I am truly sorry for those I made feel like their hair isn't beautiful. This was definitely a lesson learned for me. I have always supported black businesses and will continue to do so, and will continue to apologize to anyone else offended by my comments. And then she goes on to say, and for those that said I turned off my comments to run away from what I said, that wasn't the case. People have started bullying me. And saying things that don't even relate to what I said. And I don't want to keep reading the negativity. Thank you to all that have educated me on what I should have said and more. 
Also, thank you to the ones who gave me products to share with my mom to help her with her hair also. I planned on making a video of me apologizing, but I'm dealing with eye infection. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> and I don't want to look crazy on camera. Again, sincerely apologize to anyone I offended. I'll be sure to educate myself on more topics so this doesn't happen again. Thank you to all the ones who still support me. XO, Brianna Monique. Okay. I personally feel that her apology was sincere. I, I will accept it as sincere. And here's why. Because when your audience is black women, when your coins depend on black women, you cannot be colorist. And what I mean is publicly colorless. Let me say that because there's a lot of colorist people on YouTube and the media in general, personalities, what have you, that uh, depend on the black dollar, the specifically the black woman's dollar, and they are colorist and anti-black. So let me be very clear. I mean, publicly colorist, we can clock you. We can clock your colorism. That's not what you want to do. That will automatically affect your income. So I feel like on that, on that realm, she's definitely sorry for offending her main audience. I just think some of the comments that she made in her apology were very interesting. You know, her being raised in a black household, as well as her not having any connection to the white side of her family. I'm not surprised by that. A lot of biracial people have that story, unfortunately. Like I was discussing with some of the ladies in my comment section, I do feel like her feelings about her hair came from home. Start at home, start it with hearing certain, you know, phrases and language attached to her hair in comparison probably to her moms, her cousins, anyone in her family who's black and has uh, the black American phenotype. Uh, you know, I'm sure she was being compared to those family members. And I'm sure there was language used that set her apart in such a way where she started learning oh i'm different oh my hair is different oh it's it's manageable you know what i mean everyone's hair is manageable everyone's hair is manageable it's just that particular hair types require a certain type of product certain types of combs and brushes certain type of heat tools like everyone's hair can be managed no one's hair is unmanageable you just can't apply the techniques and the products to a person with uh, kinkier coarser hair to a person that has fine stringy hair it's not going to work and that's not a problem however colorism does not come from that background colorism is specifically designed to set certain hair textures and certain features apart from each other and uh, categorize one as better than the other so that's that's basically what that is you know and you have to do the work especially if you're an adult to understand that that is a that is strategic right that that is not something that we just pull from out the air there is a reason why we think kinky you know uh coily coarser thicker hair is a problem right there's a reason why there's not common knowledge about how to care for natural hair there's a reason why you can't just walk into any salon and be like oh i need my hair i need to twist out and they're gonna know what you're talking about in fact, unfortunately, a lot of black stylists now are charging uh, black women with 4C kinky natural hair more money to detangle their hair to do braids. I mean, it's just it's just really getting wild. And this is <laughs> it's, 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 it's sad. You know, it's definitely sad. I'm not going to resubscribe to this uh, Brianna's channel. I am not going to continue watching her content and um, I'm good on her. I, you know, if. You feel differently if you want to go back and keep supporting her. That's definitely your business. But I just, it's just too many other people to watch for me to go and subscribe to someone who I know potentially has other colorist mindsets and ideas. It's just too many other people on YouTube for me to watch. And um, it's like, <laughs> it's like, listen. I understand that she feels that this was a moment for her to be educated. But at the end of the day, YouTubers be making too much money. <laughs> and I'm trying to get there. But people make too much money on YouTube for me to be forgiving and resubscribing to someone who already said something that was colorist. Like, it's too much. Like, we, we are all, uh, you know, aware enough to a certain extent that people be making money on YouTube. Okay? So, for those reasons, we don't need to be you know, saving people, she she will be fine. Trust and believe 
there will be plenty of black women who are still subscribed, who are still watching her, and who forgive her and don't, and from, from the beginning, didn't take anything that she said personally. So, y'all do that. I'm good on her. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Um, take care. Bye.